sometimes buttons don't work. In any event, the chat corner is here for Tuesday night. It's 10 o'clock, and hold that thought. There's your numbers. Um, you call and participate. The chat corner is an open forum for discussion about just about anything, trends in government, law issues, uh, you know, whatever. It's here. It's open. It's um, participate if you want to. If you don't, it's what you see is what you get. And tonight's referee is... Um, well, wait a second. Whoa. <laughs> Hang on. Just another consensus on the street if you'd like to participate. Uh, my headphones not working too good, I hate to tell you. I bet yours is black tonight. Okay. All right. Well, tonight's referee is Jay. If you'd like to participate, there he is. You can call up and talk to Jay, and we're going to listen to some of the things he has to say. Jay, I'm a poet, and I don't know it. Um, can you... Say hi to everybody, Jay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, the, uh, the chat corner, of course, uh, is an open forum for discussion about just about anything. And uh, what do we want to talk about first tonight? Well, July's almost over, and we never had a July 4th show because, well, I wasn't here. But, uh, <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Well, the Rowan County Advertiser put this in. I thought this was nice of them. A copy of the Declaration of Independence. You wouldn't be accusing them of being a radical nationalist or something, would you? No, as a matter of fact, this is... Uh, they're, 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 they're guilty of radical nationalism. I don't know about radical nationalism. What well, it depends on news media that you're listening to. You say it's sort of tongue in cheek. <laughs> Any event. First document in law, folks. Still in effect. Well, some people refer to that as U.S. Law Number One. You're talking about the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, and it has some really nice things in it. I just want to bring up here. He has called together. Oh, you're talking about the indictment of. Put it back. Put it back. Okay. The indictment of King George. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of parodies you can draw about that indictment. Um, um, with what's going on today, erected uh, Newman numerous officers and officers and all that's kinds further of stuff. on down through. Yeah, but Here's go ahead and part. say what you're going to say. Go ahead and say what you're going to say. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of the public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with measures. Whoa. It sounds like a <laughs> fatiguing. Your elected representative is to comply with measures. That's the accusation by Jefferson. Oh, really? Oh, in the Declaration. That's in the Declaration. Who wrote it, and it was edited by... Yeah, he he kind of edited it, yeah. Because mm -hmm. Well, he changed... Um, we hold these truths to be um, undeniable to self-evident, I think. It was one of the major changes that he made. Well, the reason I put Federal Reserve Act there is the Federal Reserve Act was passed in the dead of night on December 23rd at, what, 2 a.m., right before they broke for the Christmas holiday. They shoved this through while everybody was asleep. I think it was a voice vote after most of the legislature, uh, after most of Congress had went home for Christmas vacations, what I've heard. I was at Jekyll Island uh, where the, they met in 1910. You were? Yeah, and read the placard that talked about how the Federal Reserve came into existence. And we'll talk about money a little later. Um, I have something else here from my industry. Be here. patient if you're ringing that phone. Uh, whoever was calling just now, they, uh, I don't know if I was getting ready to go to you, but they'll let Call it back. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there's the number, 7847515. we got, we got plenty of stuff we can talk about. There's uh, uh, the New Heritage River Project. Did you heard about that? Aren't you kind of an environmental person? I have an environmental science degree, whatever, oh, whatever that's supposed to mean. But, but you're not like uh, an environmental nut. You don't like believe in saving the forest because there's a owl that I'm not an environmental nut but uh, <laughs> I like clean water <laughs> yeah yeah but um, I like good food what do you think of this new heritage uh, American Rivers Project initiative or whatever they want to call it that uh, President Clinton has started 
I'll, I'll put that up. President right. Clinton started it. What, are, well, we, are he, we living in a he, dictatorship? No, no, wait a minute now. Let's not jump to conclusions. Um, this came off the Internet, and we went straight to, this is, this is the what they call the Federal Reserve Notice, published uh, June 20th, 1997, and this is a revision of it because, uh, as uh, you can see by that, uh, they had to revise it. The initial comment period was only two weeks, and then somebody said, uh, wait a minute, Mr. Clinton, uh, we've got to go at least 60 to 90 days on this, or, or it's illegal. And uh, what they're proposing is, Mr. Uh, President Clinton said that uh, that there's um, he's going to propose that there's ten rivers and there are watersheds. What's a watershed? That's a drainage basin. Right. So are we on the drainage basin for what rivers? Well, there's Triple Creek that flows That's into the Licking River. Licking River flows into the Ohio, Ohio yeah, and, which uh, flows into the MISS Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So if the EPA claims uh, jurisdiction over that land um, because it's the watershed for the Mississippi, that includes us right now, doesn't it? Sure does. <laughs> uh, hmm. wonder, that, wonder what that does to It property. sounds a lot like there's something else we're going to talk about soon. It's a very similar piece of legislation. Or, uh... I wonder how that affects your property rights. Hmm. Anyway, hmm. if you want to comment on the American Heritage Rivers Project or if you'd like to Go check it out. It's at the uh, World Wide Web, um, epa.gov, and you can call 1-888, that's one of those new 888 toll-free numbers, uh, 40 River. Real simple, and you can comment on that, uh, or you can log on there to uh, epa.gov. Get the details on this, because I think if you read it all, it's real flowery and sounds real nice, but when you start thinking about your property rights and how they're going to, uh, you know, the biggest polluters most likely are corporations, not the, you know, Joe Farmer down the road. And not the middle class. No, <laughs> but those laws will impo be imposed upon us. I've mm -hmm. got something that's interesting here to read. You want to move on to something else now? Sure. Okay, what do you got? Is, uh, this is from the Internet, from the news group. Bruce Lee? What? That's a, oh. that's a nickname someone was using on there. Oh. This, is this up here yet? Yeah. Okay. All right, this is... Uh, right there, you're looking at it. The Mountain... What? Media? The what? Mountain Media. Quit moving it around. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the whole thing to fit on there. Libertarian. This is a letter written by this doctor to Mr. Lane Pierre, uh, Mr. LaPierre of the National Rifle Association. Oh. And I just got to pick this up and read it because it's kind of small. But uh, it says, Dear Miss Hammer and Mr. LaPierre, I have received several requests from each of you to renew my membership in the National Rifle Association. I am unwilling to do so now or in the foreseeable future. You see, I'm one of those extremists whom you feel need to purge from the ranks of the organization. I know better than to go where I'm not wanted. I certainly know better than to pay for such treatment. I believe that many, though still a minority of our law enforcement agents, do behave like jackbooted thugs. Wait a minute. What? Many, no, what did you say? That's the you're quoting this from is that. What she said. I'm reading the letter okay. she wrote to the okay. The president. Just, we want to attribute this because we're not, you're not saying that, that from from Mountain Media for immediate release, dated okay. July 23rd, 1997. The no. Libertarian by Vin Sprinal was. Can't read it, folks. And I'd say, in my personal opinion, is most you know officers be whatever force they're in, state, local, whatever. They're trying to do their job for the most part. Uh, but unfortunately, the parameters of their job have changed a lot. Also, a, a BATF agent or an IRS agent is not part of law enforcement. They're a representative of a private corporation. Well, now I don't know how much proof you have for that, so if you can't attribute it, let's be careful, you know. Let's attribute everything that we can. I'm fully prepared to document that, but it takes yeah, okay. a good part of a show. Okay, that may be another show. Anyway, finish what you're saying about that. Well, it's, it's, i got to keep going with this letter. I believe the sec this is her letter to him, to the, to the NRA. I believe the Second Amendment guarantees me the right to own any weapon I choose, specifically mm. including fully automatic machine guns. Whoa. In fact, if the Second Amendment is to have any meaning, then we are obligated to own fully automatic weapons and weapons of mass destruction in order to resist the depredations of a corrupt, unconstitutional government that would sell us and our children into slavery. I believe... <laughs> too loud? 
a little bit. I uh, believe, what, do you think that do you think that's what they had in mind in the Pennsylvania Gazette when they wrote in 1889, not too long after the uh, um, they passed the uh, Second Amendment? They said that uh, it is the right, yea, even the duty of the citizen to possess every awful implement of the soldier. Referring to the Second Amendment, in reference to machine guns. <laughs> yes. Before the before um, the ATF came along in the 20s, uh, the grease guns uh, were manufactured so many that uh, you know the the first what now is referred to as assault and rifle or submachine gun. The grease guns uh, were being sold to farmers and stuff. You know, where, where we originally got the DATF was uh, the Federal Alcohol Act, which yeah. was uh, repealed. Repealed, folks. And why are they still in existence if that was all repealed? Well, when that happened, they moved the whole, <laughs> they moved the whole federal police operation to an off, offshore trust, Philippines Trust. Well, you, you, you got proof of that. That's in U.S. Code, Title 26. Yes, I have proof of that. Oh. That's document. I guess I haven't shown you as much as I thought. Well. <laughs> I have to get some of that to you. Well, maybe so. Now, see a this letter? Sure. Talk about, uh, hit the highlights. Trying to. I believe that all gun control laws are inherently evil. So, and this is, again, you're all right. You believe that you can... I believe that all gun control laws are inherently evil. It is not enough to say that Brady, that Brady will sunset, the Brady Bill speaking about. If you're willing to tolerate evil for one day, will you tolerate, to, tolerate it for two? If you are willing to tolerate it for two <laughs> days, will you tolerate it for a year? <laughs> if you tolerate it for a year, why should anyone believe you will not tolerate it forever? Mm. Uh, well, in law, in law, there's an interesting concept called what consent by acquiescence. By your mm. silence, you accept it. So, you know, anything that the bill mill churns out, if we don't object to it, what does that say? It, well, and what do we got to say now? You ever it's seen the crime bill, folks? It's 13 <laughs> minutes after the hour. Well, <laughs> we may get into that after this break. 13 minutes after the hour, and we need to pay some freight. Got to keep the lights on, folks. Chat corner's on the air. Hold that thought, because we'll be right back. The Hobby Shop, located at 145 East Main Street in Moorhead, is your one-stop shop for all your hobby needs. Propane supplies have just arrived for you paintball enthusiasts. Keith carries a full line of hobby supplies from yo-yos to model trains. A full line of car kits, including Revell and Monogram, are available as well as a variety of Hot Wheels, American Muscle Collectibles, and many accessories. Stop in and see the full line of NASCAR license plates, shirts, hats, jackets, and much, much more. Stop in, browse around, let Keith get you started on that latest hobby project. Camden Park features the Tri-State Children's Festival, Wednesday, July 23rd, noon till 6.30 p.m. Enjoy music by Larry Gross, a puppet show, The Three Little Pigs, New World Theater, and lots more. Plus, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and Jelly Herb, the stilt walker to pose for pictures. Games and drawings for bicycles throughout the afternoon, all for a dollar admission. Right on the hand stamp for just $12.50. So join the fun at the Children's Festival, Route 60 West, Huntington. It's your choice at Mann's on the bypass in Mount Sterling where you'll find the selection of Chrysler products from which to choose your next vehicle. All these choices can be overwhelming, so Randy Mann and his staff are there to help you choose the options to suit your needs and budget. For service after the sale, Mann's has the qualified technicians to handle it all. From minivans to Chrysler sedans, Jeeps, and trucks, it's your choice at Mann's on the bypass in Mount Sterling, phone 782-1388. Has your favorite ride gotten smashed? For experienced professional wreck repair, don't tarry. See Jerry. Off Rice Road down Morse Flat Road, the team of experts at Jerry's Body Shop will fix you up on 784-9811. Time for a new ride? See Jerry's Auto Sales on the Connector Road beside Jimbo's Restaurant for below book value bargains every day. Here's just one example. Rustle up some fun in this 95 Jeep Wrangler with a book value of 11650 Jerry's price 9500 What a deal. Pet Pleasure at 102 East Main Street is your center for all your supplies from fish to finches. If you're a pet lover, you can't resist stopping by Pet Pleasure for all your pet needs. We have bedding for pets, 
premium dog and cat food, as well as everything your best friend could want. If you're into the pet that's a little different, Pet Pleasure is the right place to go. They have everything from hedgehogs to iguanas. Remember, Pet Pleasure for all your pet needs, even the pinches and the parakeets will sing for you if you visit Pet Pleasure at 102 East Main Street. For exceptional quality homes at great prices, see Stamper's Mobile Homes just east of Salt Lake on US 60, 10 miles from Moorhead. Featuring Zone 3 insulation, solid oak cabinets, six panel interior doors, two by six walls, a top 20 dealer of Redmond Homes, all of Stamper's Homes are MHA approved, and 5% financing is available on your home and land. Before you buy, stop by Stamper's. Okay, we're back on the chat corner, new and improved. Well, <laughs> we have a guest referee tonight, Jay. He's here to talk about different stuff, and there is the numbers. If you want to call and participate, be sure and let that phone ring. Uh, 1-800-571-7515 or 784-7515. Uh, call up, comment on these topics that we've been talking about or any other topic we were talking about. Uh, a uh, topic before the break uh, concerning the Second Amendment and somebody's uh, direct opinion of that uh, that Jay had for us that he got off the internet and what just a second um, yeah let's attribute where you're getting this where are you getting this stuff this is from a news group at oh boy I can't hear it's a news group <laughs> alt politics libertarian talk politics and you rest all the places it Wait went off to. Li libertarian, what are you, a Lunar? Well, are you a Lunar LaRouche, the disciple, or what? No, I'm not. I'm not okay, well, you're just... The Mountain Media for immediate release. This has been all over the place, though, was the point I was trying to make. About. Okay. But I'm going to finish this up. And she continues in this letter she's written to the NRA. To the, to the National Rifle Association, the staunch supporter of supposed Second Amendment rights in this country, right? You're talking Absolutely. about the big, one of the biggest lobbies besides who? The AARP. Okay. One of the biggest lobbies besides the American Association of Retired Persons. Um, and, and, of course, they concede a lot of sporting uses of rifles, but in any event, you're talking about the literal... Uh, there's nothing about hunting in the Second Amendment. No, and the only reason the NRA even mentions, mentions hunting is to dodge the real issue, which is your liberty. Free people own guns, slaves don't. That's Ooh. just how it is, people. Jog, oh, gone. You, you don't cut, you don't uh, mince any words or <laughs> <laughs> you don't beat around the bush at all. <laughs> Go right to the, drive right at it. Yeah. That's the, uh, you know, it's hard to argue with when you can show the kind of, you know, uh, historical proof for that, like, like I was talking about earlier, the Pennsylvania Gazette, 1889. Hmm. Every awful implement of the soldier is you know, the right of the citizen. Well, I'm ready to finish this now. Should we get bazookas? Or is that too offensive? What else are you going to take a black helicopter out with? Oh, God. <laughs> black helicopter. You don't believe those things exist, do you? Uh, I've seen some pretty good photographs. Okay. <laughs> Not fuzzy stuff, huh? Just fuzzy, like the UFO photographs, little fuzzy things off in the distance that you have to blow up and it's all grainy and <laughs> can't tell it from a dirigible. What's that? I mean, a blimp? <laughs> anyway, she continues. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I will not register my guns, my ammunition, myself, or my family. I want to repeat that. I will not register my guns, my ammunition, myself, or my family. I will not. Uh, huh. I will not consent to background checks, especially when performed by a fascist government. Talking about background checks, since since they talked about that, what happened with the background checks? Uh, wasn't law enforcement supposed to do a background check on everybody that bought a gun? Uh, that's what the Brady was that in the Brady Bill? I think that was a provision of the Brady Bill, but that was struck down by Sheriff Mack. Sheriff and Mack, and what state was he? Is that Colorado? I think it was Arizona. I think you're right. Uh, yeah, the Supreme Court ruled that he was a sheriff and he refused to do it. City and county police cannot be ordered by the federal government to inst institute a background check and system on people. Bill Clinton, in the news, uh, I could put it up if I could find it, but uh, in the news, of course, he expanded the uh, uh, gun tracing program to 10 more cities where if there's a, any person under 24 years of age is involved in any kind of crime and they have a gun, they trace that back to try to find out who sold it or how he got it in his possession, 24 years old or younger. 
That's what they're keeping statistics on and tracking. Well, anyway, during that uh, announcement of his expansion, he said, uh, of the program, he said that he urges uh, local officials to voluntarily do the background checks now because the Supreme Court said, eh -eh, can't do that. Volunteer to be a traitor to your community. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> That's your opinion. And once again, we remind you, the chat corner is here. It's an open forum. And, uh, yeah, it can get pretty provocative. Be polite as you can. State your case. 784-7515. What do you think about these or any other topics, trends in government, politics, what's going on? You know, talk about it. 784-7515 or 1-800-571-7515. What else you got for us today, Jeff? Or Sorry, Jay. <laughs> well, I guess I could finish this. Let's see. Well, yeah. What what else is the what major points are they making uh, beyond that? Beyond the um, registering of weapons and and by the way, Brady Bill Two that I think has been stalled right now. If you've got a thousand rounds of ammunition, you got to get an ATF approved locker for your. You know how if you get like twenty two rounds, how many a thousand rounds takes up? You probably get that in less than a cubic foot. Mm -hmm. It's heavy. But, but it's a small, you know, it's only a cubic foot, and they've got this huge locker they want you to put your thousand rounds in. I think we need to get to this. <laughs> this okay. This is from, uh, what we got there? From Saf Safan News. This is off the internet. Okay. SR 35, resolution by Kentucky State Senate. Who? The Kentucky State Senate. The Kentucky State Senate. Thus you wait think. A, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Kentucky State Senate? And what? And they're talking about what? The biosphere reserves. Yeah. How come we didn't hear about this in the news? Why didn't we hear about it? Is that a what? phone call? Yeah, it might be a phone hey. call. Let's see if they want to chit chat here. You're on the chat corner, caller. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I guess they just didn't wait that fraction of a second long enough. In any event, okay, let's let's talk about this. A resolution opposing the biosphere reserve. Reserves designation of the man and the biosphere program and urging that the proposed biodiversity treaty not be ratified by the United States. See, our state government opposes the United Nations. Really? Yes. Oh, I wonder why. The, Hello, caller. You're on the chat corner. Hello. Hello. Are you, you're on the chat corner. Okay, I just wanted to say that you have an interesting program on tonight. Uh, something that I'd like to say is that uh, I'd like to see senior citizens own more uh, weapons and be trained, have a civil program uh, huh. to train them how to use those weapons because they are the ones who are preyed upon by criminals. You read that in the newspaper all the time and they seem to be defenseless because they don't have guns and if they do you just think... don't know how to use them, they're afraid of mm. them. And... That's an excellent point. Well, they, they do you know, tend to be a little bit on the... The uh, disadvantage as far as physical strength, I guess, after you get up in years. And, you know, sure, they're no longer technically under United States Code part of the militia because it's from 16 to 46. But they're still a citizen, so Second Amendment applies, right? Well, yeah, and, and Black's Law Dictionary, the, the, the legal definition of a militia is an armed citizenry. It's everyone. Okay. That's why when uh, Schumer gets on television and says, uh, all you militia people, you're all criminals. Well, the militia is everyone in the phone book, folks. <laughs> well, except businesses. Corporations can't and, uh, be a member of the militia. And, gov and elected officials. Yeah. Well, it interests me that Florida has a really high crime rate and it also has the highest number of senior citizens living there. And, of course, the criminals are, are, are out to get the senior citizens because they go there to retire and they have a certain amount of wealth and... Uh, you know, that's, that's really something I think should be stressed. Uh, well, I've heard some people say, "Where's this?" I've heard some people say the last attack. American to leave Florida, um, last American to leave Florida, bring the flag. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's uh, the uh, yeah. I, I, we get you, the point there, uh, caller. The um, um, you know, it's obviously, there's, of course, with the Kentucky Concealed Weapons Licensing Program now, or you can be trained to carry a concealed weapon. You can get that training there, um, you know, and, and those folks are, are avail available and out there. You can seek them out, um, and, you know, they uh, have to be qualified to train you 
to uh, to uh, get that permit. I guess it is, but you know, one would argue whether you need it or not. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, did you have anything else, caller, about the uh, Second Amendment or anything else? Well, I'm, you know, I, I really think uh, women are a little bit more apprehensive about guns than than the, the men are. But I have a sister that lives uh, way out in the country, up Ohio, here in eastern Kentucky, and we kind of consider she ourselves a... Has a gun. She says bullets are cheaper than dog food. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, they are kind of cheap. You know, when you look at them, especially if you buy a lot of them. Which, uh, if you buy a bunch of them and get the discount, now you got to go out and get yourself a big, well, it's that Brady Bill 2 passes. you got to get a big um, Bureau of Alcohol, uh, Tobacco, and Firearms approved locker that's like six foot by three foot. You know, has anybody out there got more than a thousand rounds of 22? That's a, not very much. It's, yeah. You uh, have to take responsibility for your own protection, folks. Call an ambulance, a policeman and a cop and see who gets there you know, an ambulance a policeman and a pizza driver and see who gets there first <laughs> <laughs> well you don't you're not talking about our local people are you? well that that goes for anywhere in the country it's well, just uh that's just how it is i don't know i've, I've waited on pizzas for 45 minutes before so um we don't want to well, thank you all for having such an interesting show i have oh. to go order a pizza now. you're welcome <laughs> and, and, and thank what Thank you for Thanks watching. for the humor. Thanks for being polite. You know, we can we can disagree on stuff or not, but at least we can be polite about it. And uh, you know, the line's open seven eight four seven five one five one eight hundred five seven one seven five one five. Numbers on the screen. I want to read this, folks. This is okay. from what the UN's trying to shove down our throats. The United Nations, you mean? Yeah, the UN, the United Nations. Taking over the tip of uh, Manhattan there. Right. Taken over our constitution of delegated authority. Well, maybe not yet. Whereas the proposed biodiversity treaty, if ratified by the United States, would ultimately lead to the reality that Kentuckians could not use their private and public lands in the manner to which they have been accustomed. Accustomed. It wouldn't be, <laughs> wouldn't it be just cool if they put up a big barbed wire fence all the way around the Danaboo National Forest or in sections of it and said, we're going to control all the access here. and I don't know if the federal budget would allow that. I mean, after all, we're spending more than we uh, take in right now, so how would they put that up? They'd just take it from us, isn't oh. that what they always do? Well, or print more money, <laughs> print more paper money. Anyway. <laughs> Whereas the restrictions contemplated together with, with the outside control of the land encompassed by a biosphere reserve constitutes an unlawful taking of that land in violation of the Constitution of the United States to wit, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. This is the supreme law of the land, folks. This is the Constitution. Well, this where are we getting this from? This is an actual resolution yeah. by, adopted by the state legislature. Uh, what is it called? Senate Resolution? S Senate Resolution 35. And when this Senate Resolution quotes the Constitution of the United States, it's in defense of the resolution. They're using the Constitution of the United States of America as evidence that this that this biosphere treaty is wrong. Sounds illegal, like some people. Sounds like some folks over in the uh, in Frankfurt may be doing their job with this one, huh? Uh, yeah, I think so. As a matter of fact, this is one of the reasons I am pro-government, pro-states' rights. Wait a minute. You, I thought for a while there you were a right-wing anti-government <laughs> extremist. <laughs> oh, thought, good, a caller. Let's here we go. Let's on. see what we got here. They just don't wait long enough. You gotta let it ring. You know, you can call the gas station; they'll pick up in two rings. Don't be shy. Don't lose your nerve. Come on, we're all living this town together. You've seen me at the grocery store before. I've seen you. Give us a call. <laughs> uh, we can, yeah, we can disagree and be polite about it. And I've heard the adage uh, many times that if you find two people who agree on everything, you know that one. Uh, Somebody is not thinking. If you find two people who agree on everything. Everybody's One of them's not thinking. <laughs> the chat corner, 784-7515 or 1-800-571-7515. And, you know, that, that, that uh, a minute hand gets kind of heavy and drops right to the bottom of the hour, uh -oh. and we've got to take a break. So hang on, caller. We'll be right to you after this break. They're not, something's happened to the phone or something. Home at all. Pelfries is open all night, Friday and Saturday, and fish are stocked each Friday morning. You don't need a fishing license at Pelfries Pay Lake, just permission from home. Come see us today and bring a friend if you like. You might need help reeling in a catfish up to 67 pounds. Remember, if you fish at all, you deserve a trip to Pelfries Pay Lake. 
Put a little pizzazz in your business image. Let Baldwin Distributing Company put your company name on our fine selection of decorated sportswear. It will make you stand out from the rest. Established in 1981, we have been dressing many individuals, businesses, schools, and universities, and organizations in elegant simplicity. Whether your company is one person or 1,000, let Baldwin Distributing in Lexington care for your business clothing needs. Call 1-800-775-5116. I was flying down the highway doing 75 When the big old cop came a-cruising by He took my license, registration too I thought that my driving days were through Auto Insurance Network is your first stop for auto insurance. Call Grayson at 474-0554, Moorhead 784-2967, and Mount Sterling 497-0355. No need to go to the big city when the best prices in Kentucky are found at Buford's Clothing in Clearfield. Buford has been the low price leader in the Morehead area for the last 16 years. At Buford, you'll find Levi's for the entire family, plus other famous brands like Lee, Chick, Wrangler, and HIS. For all your shirts, tops, jeans, and jackets, be sure to shop the biggest little store in this area. That's Buford's Clothing, Kentucky 519 in Clearfield. And remember, if it didn't come from Buford, you probably paid too much. Okay, folks. Huh, nice little break there we had. And the chat corner is back with you. And hopefully you're with us. Uh, you know, if you want us to explain anything, you can call in there. If you don't understand something that Jay's talking about or you'd like for him to expand on something or, or if you would like to say anything about just about anything, there's the phone number. The opinions expressed on the chat corner are those of the participants and not necessarily anybody else. <laughs> Information is uh, for entertainment purposes only, I should say, maybe. But, you know, all that fine print stuff uh, is that's like putting up a sign that says not responsible for accidents. <laughs> Doesn't really have any meaning in the law. <laughs> um, in any event, it's uh, about 27 minutes, so we got some time left. And uh, give us a call if you'd like. Uh, we'll, we'll, topics are open for about anything. And, whoa, there we go. There you are. You're on. This is from SR 35, resolution by the Kentucky State Senate, April 29th, 1997. Okay. That sounds like a good attribution. You told where you got it. It was passed on May 29th, 1997. And here's and reading on now. This is a very long document, folks. By the way, do you know the difference between a resolution and an enactment? No, I don't. I don't resolutions general resolutions generally only apply to government employees. Something has to be an enact, enacted into positive law before it applies to citizens, in most cases. You know, so you have a uh, House resolution in Washington, you hear about all these House resolutions and this and that and the other. Wait, that positive law, that's also known as enabling legislation, isn't it? Well, yeah, you got to have like a positive law citation for a, something to be positive law. If it's not cited as positive law, you have to do what they call assume that it's positive law, and that means it's Prima facie law. Now listen to this. Whereas biosphere reserves are, by definition, designed to continually expand each of the three areas core protected zone, buffer zone, and zone of cooperation. What if they declare your private property the buffer zone of a biosphere area? <laughs> um, and you got to move. <laughs> um, you probably can't operate a motor vehicle. I don't know. What does that mean? You probably got to move. It's going to mean whatever they try and say. You know, (laughs) as long as a lot of the media, uh, big media, of course, uh, as you can tell, if you watch television much, we're not some big, huge, multi-million dollar media conglomerate controlled Mm -hmm. by the likes of Rupert Murdoch or 
Ted Turner or Fonda Jane. Uh, Here's a question that deserves but to be in asked. Event, in any event, uh, I forgot you, you made me forget what I was going to um, <laughs> The Kentucky State Senate must be rather ups uh, upset about this. How come we haven't heard about it in... That's I don't know. What, you know. Why didn't we hear it in the Herald Liberal? I mean, the Herald <laughs> Leader. Why didn't we hear about that? Do you think they might have more uh, environmental readers than they have uh, readers that care about individual rights? Well, you know, this stuff, we worry too much. We shouldn't worry about things like this. Nah, it's, it's just, you know, it's just the lobster effect. Every little, uh, you, you put the lobster in the pot and, and you know, uh, you put him in a small pot and if you just gradually turn up the heat, he won't notice it until he's boiling. <laughs> Listen to this. This is on down. This is towards the end of it. Whereas the virtual seeding of these lands to the United Nations leaves the residents who own the land, local governments, and the Commonwealth of Kentucky without any legitimate form for redress of grievances for input into any decision-making process relating to the Biosphere Reserve. In other words, this is being forced on us, and none of our local or state government is going to have anything to do or say about it. Well, you know, uh, people may have heard of Al Smith and the likes of uh, Al Smith and um, uh, Sue Wiley. Mm -hmm. Heard of any of those names? No, I haven't. They had a whole show uh, where people were talking about that. And um, I actually spent some time in the uh, uh, international biosphere known as the uh, Great Smoky Mountains. Yes. Rode right past the sign, and it's got it at, uh, routered into the wood now on the signs. It is an international biosphere. And, you know, and maybe uh, legally it doesn't imply that the UN actually owns it, but it kind of, what's that song from the 60s? Signs, signs everywhere, signs. <laughs> Blocking up the scenery. <laughs> Literally there. Just trying to get a call. Are you going to read one of these quotes and see if we can get somebody to tell us who said this quote? Um, fine. It's, uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. we got a few minutes here before the next break. Okay, I'll, find a, I'll see if I can find a good one here. Uh, these are the times that try men's souls. Who said that? The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in the crisis, shrink from the service of their country. Well, you just have this typed out. Yeah, but he that stands now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. Hmm. Yet we have the co consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. Tis dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper place on its goods. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. I think you Who went said that, folks? I think you went above the um, the sixth grade level that most media caters down to. <laughs> I don't know if CNN, I under, I don't know if I understood all that. CNN is the communist news network, people. Oh well, we could give a hint. Um, uh, back in the days when this was written, it came out of uh, uh, something called Common Sense. Does anybody know who wrote that? It was considered common sense. Or the rights of man. Was that all the rights of man or common sense? Well, that was all the rights of man. well you just gave him another hint. Uh -huh. The same author wrote both of those. <laughs> uh, lest you believe the National Guard is the militia, folks. Oh, yeah, we need, yeah, there, there you go. U.S. Code, oh, Title like, 10, Chapter 13. The, um, the, um, um, common argument is, is that the National Guard today is the militia. So, what were you about to say? You can read it here. Okay, this is from United States uh, Title 10, uh, referring to the US Code, Armed 10, Forces, right? Chapter 13. And we have a caller, I think. Are you there, caller? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Again. Oh, well. Are we not quick enough? No, I guess. Either we're not quick enough or people aren't patient enough. I don't know which it is. Uh, whoever's calling and only ring that twice, you know, this ain't the uh, uh, pick and pay. They're not going <laughs> to... You're not going to answer, you know, we'll answer the phone uh, maybe on the fourth ring. You know, give it two more rings. The uh, classes of the militia are the organized militia, which consists of the National Guard and the Naval Militia, and two, the unorganized militia, which consists of the members of the militia who are not members of the National Guard or the, Na or the Naval Militia. Is that where sheriffs used to get their posses from, the unorganized militia? That's right. Well, a sheriff says, hey, uh, you know, we got to get a posse up here. we got to go look for this... Uh, 
this criminal that just robbed the bank and took all the actual lawful money out of it. And i got to say something else about the lies the TV tells you. The National Guard... The TV? Wait a minute. You're on TV. How do we know... <laughs> the what? major media. Oh, well, if you're on TV, then they need to check this out. Let's get the caller. Okay. Uh, you're on the chat corner. Yes. Um, is Thomas Jefferson the one that said that quote? Oh, uh, same first name. Good guess. Same first name, what do you take for a headache? Or what, what, what do you feel when you have uh, a headache? Pain? <laughs> Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine said that. These are the times that try men's souls. And I, you know, it's probably been that way ever since he said yeah, it. I don't think your teacher in, at Rowan County High is going to cover this, although they should. They well, should cover a lot of these uh, they might cover it. I, w I hope they do. I, uh, yeah, it would be nice if they do. What, what, uh, what else was you just wanting to uh, answer the question? Yeah, well, I remember hearing about that, um, the common sense, I think it was like a pamphlet or something like mm -hmm. that. It, yeah. And we talked about that in geography class. Yeah, well, the, of all things. The not, not history, geography. The Continental <laughs> Army was on the verge of totally disbanding and abandoning the cause when uh, Thomas oh. Paine wrote that. That that radical right wing <laughs> piece of propaganda. <laughs> that gave the yeah. yeah. Wonder what if the national media existed during the revolution. Uh, rev uh, well, I probably could go back to Britain and look directly at a lot of the stuff that was written in British newspapers, and it would probably very you could draw a lot of parallels with what is being said about some of the quote, patriots in this country now. I've got a lot of stuff that's been written about that. I'll bring it in another show. <laughs> well, what else do you have for us, caller? Is that, was that you just wanted to guess on Thomas Paine? Or? Yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to talk about? Not really. Okay. Well, thanks for your call right. and thanks Keep for your watching. participation. It's a, it's a open forum for discussion about anything. You know, uh, somebody was griping about uh, something down the road here the other day, and we we listened to it, you know, talking about some road project that didn't. Hang on, another caller. Yeah, hang on. You're on the chat corner, caller. What's going on, boys? Hey. Well, uh, I don't know. I didn't watch the news today. What's going on? <laughs> you tell us. It's supposed to rain. Yeah. Well, it did rain uh, yesterday. Water, water. It, we needed uh, rain too. Of, rain and wind. Yeah, the tobacco's looking uh, kind of. Uh, lowly in some places, but uh, what's happening with you, caller? How, what, what would you like to bring up or talk about? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, call back when you know what you want to talk about because we're here. You know, it's an open forum. You can use it, and we appreciate your call. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks for your call. 784-7515, uh, 1-800-571-7515. There they are on the screen. In case you're across the room, you know, we'll read them to you. But uh, turn down your TV, too, uh, or call from the next room so we I don't get a whistle. I want to say something else, too. What you know, else you got? What one of the reasons that, that the National Guard is not, is not the militia is because the National Guard is an international guard. Well, These now, you're, 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 that's mean. not what the law says you're reading to us. Now, where are you getting that? Well, just look at every major conflict in history in uh, the past... Fifty, hundred years, maybe. Uh, this is, by the way, right out of page 95, Title 10, Armed Forces. And, um, you know, they get most of their money from the federal government, so that's why they call them that. This is still law. This was National never repealed Guard. for any reason. Huh? What? This is this is law. This is not... Oh, and it's it's, it's what? It's positive law, too, I believe, if you, if you look at the, uh, uh, the uh, title page for the... And when you open the law book, there will usually be a positive law citation there, and it talks about the enact, and a positive law citation enacts into positive law, codifies it. Here's another good quote. See who, if anyone could tell me who said this. This year will go down in history for the first time. A civilized nation has full gun registration. Our streets will be safer. Our police <laughs> more efficient. And the world will follow our lead into the future. Who said that? Well, I don't. Well, I got this off the web too. Oh, um, hmm. Um, I bet I. He wasn't I, a very nice guy. No, he wasn't a very nice guy, was he? And it's not the well, just make, so we don't confuse anybody. It wasn't uh, any either one of the last two presidents. No, it wasn't even an American. No, well, <laughs> definitely not. I would argue again. an American that said that might be a traitor. I don't think anybody um, will guess this, but I'll read it again, and then I'll tell you who said it. This year will go down in history for the first time. A civilized nation has full gun registration. Our streets will be safer. Our police more efficient. 
and the world will follow our lead into the future. Adolf Hitler said that, people. Whoa. Okay. Well, you know what? The, it, probably the most widely quoted thing that Benjamin Franklin said is, um, you know, there's nothing sure in this life except death and taxes. Mm -hmm. But on the, on the safety thing, uh, Hitler talking about our, our country being safe, Franklin is less quoted as saying um, those who would give up a little bit of uh, freedom for safety would deserve uh, and get neither. <laughs> Caller, you're on the chat corner. Well. Yeah. What 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 would you like to talk about? You're on the chat corner. Oh, well, I guess I had a couple of questions. Okay. Um, one, I understand that I, I don't know what gentleman's name is that with the earphones. Jay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I understand that uh, he may have some problems with uh, the United Nations having uh, too much influence on uh, government policy. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. He's a little okay. bit wary of their uh, authority uh, or de facto authority, I guess you should say. Anyway. Okay. Well, I'm not saying that, that the United States or any state therein should concede to the United Nations, but I'm only going to ask how you would expect the United States to compete in the global market without some concessions. Um, well, if we, if, we, if we policed our borders like most other countries, uh, I believe we could compete better in, the, in, in because we're, we're they're they're asking us by uh, opening our borders and through free trade, we're expected to compete with people in other countries that are earning pennies on the day. You know, you got kids over in India stitching soccer balls together and earning less than two dollars. What, what is it that says on the Statue of Liberty again? Um, well, you're talking about immigrants now, and, the, and that was a gift, by the way, from the French. Who they're, they're yeah, well, there you go. I mean, it was that, a that, gift, and it, it, it was a you gift. You should get rid of that if you're going to be truly isolationist. Well, anyway. we're not. I, I agree. We're, we're not isolationists. I would say we're more protectionists, and, and that's I, and and if you listen to the news media, the word protectionist has become a bad word, just like patriot and uh, you know militia and a lot of other bad well, words. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad. What was your point in quoting Hitler, though? Um, well, he re he was a, he was uh, Our, saying that all this gun registration was going to make the country safer, and what happened? So he agrees with Hitler on that point. No, no, no we're, we're swimming, saying we're, we're saying that Hitler was saying we're swimming in people that want to go and register no. all the gun owners and oh, all I the see. guns. And Hitler was like, "What was the quote again?" Uh, read it. Okay. Yeah. Read can, it. can you find it? Yeah, I can find it in here. Uh, this was right before the. Well, it was probably while the the. Uh, concentration camps were going on. This is, well, in 1933, he registered guns, and 36, he started registering people. Oh, okay, 33. Oh, you're saying because because they were registering guns. I understand. I'm saying when you, when I, you I register your, your gun, you're telling whoever you registered your gun with where you live, what kind of gun you have. I understand. You know, this year will go down in history. For the first time, a civilized nation has full gun registration. Our streets will be safer, our police more efficient, and the world will follow our lead into the future. Adolf Hitler. I see. I see. And the United Nations is dedicated to World Global Disarmament in State Department Document 7277, Disarmament Series 5, November 1961, explicitly states that the American people are to be disarmed. Also, see Public Law 87297. Yeah, hopefully, they're, hopefully you're taping that if you wanted to get those quotes, because uh, it went by kind of quick. Well, um, no, I, I, uh, it wasn't that I was agreeing or disagreeing with you. I just wanted you to clarify. Okay, okay. No, no, yeah, I think that uh, we're not agreeing with Adolf Hitler. <laughs> not in, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes the, you know, yeah, I you never know. Right, no, we're not, we are not, uh, well, you know, Hitler wasn't even a fascist if you take the literal definition of the word. Wow. But no, no. I but, think he was. No, well, listen, uh, the fa fascia, which if you deal with the syllables of the word, the fascia <laughs> refers... With the big axe that they drove down the streets, right? No, the fascia <laughs> refers to... And we have fascia on the back of some of our older coins. Uh, it refers to the bundle of rods which was used in Roman court to mete out justice. Okay. Right. The the guy that went to the uh, Philippines or somewhere and got beat with the the caning, yeah. that was fascist because they actually used a rod. And oh, so if you use a gun, it's not fascist. No, no. What, what I think you know, uh, if you if you could nail a or a. Back a um, sociologist or a government professor back in the corner, he would admit that Hitler was not a fascist; he was a dictator. Yeah. And and or uh, uh, maybe some. Well, that's a fine line, huh? No, he was. They seized power, and there was one party. It was not too far away from the Soviet Union. I mean, because you had one party, you had 
One guy at the head of it, he was pretty much a dictator. Yeah, both are on the left. How much, how much time we got left? Oh, uh, we, we got ten minutes. Anyway. Sure, Thank thanks for calling, for calling dude. Yeah, sure. The, you know, the chat corner is on on selected nights right now from uh, Monday through Thursday, um, uh, from ten to eleven, and you know, basically just depends on when we have time right now. But as it, as we move along here and get the bugs worked out and how we get our information and and attribute things and that kind of stuff, uh, we, we may see it uh, Monday through Thursday each night. So just watch for it. Chat corner, 784-7515, And we do have another caller. We've got nine minutes left in the show, so plenty of time. You're on the chat corner. Hey, i got a question for you. Okay. Um, say you got some no trespassing signs posted. Mm -hmm. Somebody breaks in your house and they're carrying a gun. Say you're going to blow your brains out. What should you do? Well, if you don't have a gun, then... Um, you know, a sign does not protect you very much unless you decide to take them to court later. Yeah. Um, you've posted it, and, um, you know, there's even some people that say that the sign is not any, you know, you can put up any sign you want, and it doesn't mean that it's law. You put people on notice, and uh, they may Public be... Public notice. Yeah, but... Just like a newspaper. By the, by the same token, some people can claim right of easement. There's people driving, uh, or... With us operating a motor vehicle in this country without any kind of license right now, no tags or anything, mm -hmm. they claim right of easement, and and they're not operating, they're traveling. Yeah. So I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there that you know, and they cite the law and the case law and they support it, you know. And after the you know, people get tired, the court system gets tired of fooling with them, then they uh, leave them alone. But what you're talking, about, what what you're referring to, the specific situation, if you don't have a gun to defend yourself. What are you going to say? Please don't shoot me. Please don't take my property. Yeah, but what case you did have a, a gun and you shot him? What would they do to you? Well, the current state of the law, I mean, if it becomes a... Uh, I've actually heard people say that if somebody uh, um, comes in your yard with a gun and acts like they're threatening you... And this is, like I said, we're, we're just talking here. Mm -hmm. This is opinions. Yeah. Entertainment purposes only. Food, right. food for thought. Somebody comes in your yard, knocks on your door, or you catch them uh, picking your lock and opening the door, and they haven't come in your house, and you shoot them, drag them inside, because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because the you criminals know, have more rights than the property owners. Well, and, you, yeah, some overzealous prosecutor may want to get some media attention and prosecute you for protecting your own property. Who knows? Uh, you know, you hear about that kind of stuff, and, and the sensationalist media. Loves to grab your attention with those kind of stories, but I'd say you're per, you'd, you'd be in your right to defend yourself if somebody broke in your house, like you're describing, yeah. and you shot them. If they had a gun, they were awfully they were using deadly force or threatening deadly force. You could defend yourself and feel uh, totally confident that you would come out of it with the, uh, you know, yeah. on top. Especially if you know, you denied them entry, you well, kept trying to get in, or they were trying mm -hmm. to get in. You know, and all that stuff gets investigated whenever somebody dies, so hopefully the facts will be in your favor if that actually did happen. What else do you have for us? Well, that's it. Okay, thanks for, thanks for calling. We've got about six minutes before the top of the hour. Um, if anybody else would like to call in, you know, minute hand's getting towards the top. Now's the time. Uh, chat corner will be over in about six minutes. Um, what else do you have for us tonight, Jay? Oh... Wow. All kind of stuff. Well, um, uh, do, 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 do. This is, uh, see if anybody knows who said this. If you will not fight for right when you can easily win without bloodshed, if you will not fight when your victory is sure and not too costly, you may come to the moment when you will have to fight with all the odds against you and only a precarious chance of survival. There may even be a worse case. You may have to fight when there is no hope of victory, because it is better to perish than to live as slaves. Mm, so you're saying the longer you let it go, the worse it's going to get. The worse it's going to get. And the more effort it's going to take to correct it. You know, I think if you read some of what Jefferson wrote, and I'm, I'm getting this secondhand because I've heard you know professors talk about it, that he thought originally that there should be like a revolu uh, revolution in this country every few years. Oh, that sounds awful radical. <laughs> Can you say that on television? Well, uh, I'm uh, not trying are to... Are you threatening someone? <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Jay. Uh, no. <laughs> I know that. And I think the audience knows that. <laughs> I'm, not all, uh, I'm also not inciting a riot. We're just here to chat. Hence the name, the chat corner. 
but most anything's fair game. We just don't want to libel a per- an individual. Don't don't talk bad about your neighbor, but we can disagree politely. One eight hundred seven five seven one seven five one five seven eight four seven five one five. Or you can expand on anything we've talked about if you've got you know uh, an idea or opinion. Of course, opinions are like most other features of the anatomy. Everybody has at least one. Uh, <laughs> And probably more than one, if you just think about it. Um, this is uh, Declaration of Independence. Right out of the Round County Advertiser, which we, we yeah. like those guys, and here they are publishing something that, that probably we need to think a lot more about these days. Yeah, and wait, we have a caller, Jay. You're on the chat corner. Hi, how you doing? Well, I just wanted to say, uh, I don't know if you've been told in a long time, but I just wanted you guys to know you're doing a hell of a good job, and... <laughs> um, you're entertaining, and it, so you're some smart guys, and I think your your uh, issues are, are pertinent. And just don't you're say doing a good job. Just don't say mega dittos. I, I I can't handle that. If somebody called up and said mega dittos, I'd I'd hang up on. No, I appreciate that a lot. That's a that, that's really. Well, you guys, I mean, you guys are doing a good job. I think you're well thought out, and I just wanted you to get a compliment today. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, I think, you know, a lot of the issues we're talking about, if you look on uh, major media, which we are not, and we don't make any pre- false pretenses that we are, uh, you know, multi-million dollar media outlet or whatever, um, or part of some other network, but um, y- you get such a different slant that this kind of stuff uh, gets lost in the mix or, yeah. or is ignored or... Sure, and I, sure. Think, I think it needs to be thrown around and kicked around and, and sure. people need to talk. That's what we're here for. Is okay. that was that all you have for us, Colin? Yeah, I just well, wanted to say thanks. Thanks, thank you very much. thanks for right. participating in the chat corner, the open forum that it is. All right, good luck, guys. Sure. Um, Call back. Sure. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Um, but there's the number. we got time maybe for one or two more callers, depending on how much you want to talk about. And um, This is from the Declaration of Independence. He has erected a multitude of new offices yeah. and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. <laughs> hmm, that sounds like today. Sometimes I wonder if they sit down, uh, you know, the uh, cabinet sits down at when the administration takes, you know, every four years there's a new administration. Of course, this time it's pretty much the same one. But um, I think they sit down with alphabet soup. Yeah. If anybody wants to call up and ask about an issue you've heard in the news, and yeah. a, a, you know, a rumor you heard about, because we have different sources of information than you may have access to. They, they sit down with some alphabet soup, and they pull out three letters with each spoonful and try to create a new government agency. <laughs> <laughs> EPA, FDA, AT, ATF, C, then NSA. I mean, what, how many can you think of? <laughs> they all got nice, colorful seals now, you know. The Internet's full of that stuff. It's neat to pull that up. It's all look, looking slick and glossy and commercial now. And you're on the chat corner. Hello, how you doing? Hi. Sure. I was just calling. Okay. Okay. You are just calling. You just called. <laughs> she did. She just called. Uh, and that was it. <laughs> Okay, well, we, we're, man, we're winding down to the last few seconds. Any final thoughts before we wind up this uh, Tuesday edition of the Chat Corner, Jay? He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coast, burned our towns. Waco! Oh, that, that's not Waco. That didn't say anything about Waco in the declaration. You're the last caller on the Chat Corner for tonight. What do you have? Hello. Yeah. Talk to you. What, what are you talking about? Well, it, the chat corner is open for discussion about anything. Jay brought in some issues tonight, and we talked about gun control issues and um, um, government uh, documents, uh, uh, yeah, stuff what, on the internet. Um, what you know, sources of information, hey, what, articles, books. Huh? Well, um, there's a lot of things in the news been going around about you know, Bill Cosby and stuff. What do you think about that? Well, um, you know, he he may have. I mean, he was like a really good guy. You know, I really like this yeah. man. And he probably tried to keep stuff quiet on the advice of his uh, uh, agents and pu- you know public relations people. He wanted to try to keep that quiet that he had a daughter, and uh, it finally came out. And you know maybe he should have. Well, you know, and I, and I think well, well, you know, um, and I'm sure she's uh, uh, got a, an attorney bending her ear that's saying, you know, go for the deep pockets. 
I think that that's the, this is the philosophy. You I know. think that Bill Cosby and OJ could get together and get their own television television station and be on 24 hours a day. Um, I like Bill Cosby. I think he probably just let something go for far too long. He should have uh, dealt with it, you know, 20 years ago. I'm sorry, I'm not really up on what's been going on with Bill Cosby. Well, he's got a, a daughter uh, by another I woman. Well, sure. What I can, there's so much of it, really. Yeah, there's so much out there nowadays, and, and, you know, pretty soon there'll be 500 channels for you to flip through probably on your TV, so, you know, we, well, hey, we may be on satellite soon. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Get my hook up. All right, thanks for calling, and watch for the chat. Yeah, it's great time. Sure. Thank you. Watch for the chat corner. Monday through Thursdays, I'd like to thank Jay for coming in tonight and being our guest referee, so to speak. But until that next time you see that on the screen, hold that thought. And uh, there's the numbers. Write them down next time you see us. Now you're the one I can see your face. You don't want to know.